Hey, what's up, guys? This is Brad with Spike Fitness, and um, the recipe videos have been going pretty good, so I want to try to do another video. This one's a little different, though. It's not using the um, the Instant Pot. It's actually doing kind of a recipe and cooking with my grill. Um, so if you have access to a, a grill, um, gas grill is what I'm using. You could probably use uh, charcoal as well, but I haven't used that. Um, so this recipe is for, for salmon. So we went out and bought a couple of uh, fillets of salmon. Um, as you can see, I've just kind of split them in half. Then I got two more over here. Um, and so I'm trying to feed like six or seven people tonight. So anyway, so the first step is I got my salmon. Um, I've cut it and now I've laid it onto these uh, strips of tin foil. All right, so um, as I talked about before, I got my uh, strips of salmon kind of uh, halved and then laid out onto some tin foil. And the, the recipe that you guys uh, are gonna be using for uh, the salmon recipe, super simple. Um, I just have a little bit of butter that I've melted. Um, and really, uh, the amount of butter is kind of immaterial. It's just enough to be able to coat the, uh, the salmon. So I, it's kind of matters a bit, I guess, how much you have. But you don't need a lot, and that's kind of the point. Um, I think I had maybe four tablespoons. Um, some sea, uh, some salt, you can use kind of whatever you, is your preference, sea salt or otherwise. I have this pink Himalayan, and it makes me feel super fancy. So uh, I'm just going to utilize the, the pink Himalayan. And then dill, all right? So that's it. That's, that's all the more that you need. Butter, salt, dill. Um, so, go ahead and open this up. And so what I have is uh, I've melted my butter just to make it more easy to apply to the salmon. And I got my little brush here, and I'm just gonna brush a little thin coat of butter onto each of my uh, fillets. And what this is gonna do is it just gives it a little bit of oil, um, you know, a little bit of a fat to help cook the salmon. Um, but it's also nice because the, the butter that's on there helps the, um, the dill and the salt to kind of stick to it, so that's why. And you could use uh, something else if you chose. You could use uh, an oil or whatever you, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, butter is just a nice, a nice choice, so I tend to use the butter. And since I'm not going to be able to use this butter for anything else, I might as well use all the butter. That's good. All right, that's the first step. We're just going to take our sea salt, or pink Himalayan salt, and I'm just going to kind of pinch some on. And you can, I'm not going to give you any amounts of, or for the salt because you're really just kind of salting the flavor. So if you like salt, uh, like I do, you'll tend to use a little bit more. And if you're not a big fan of salt, then maybe you'll use a little bit less. Um, but I feel like the, the salt just kind of livens up the flavor of the meat a little bit and uh, just kind of wakens it up. So I like having a decent amount of salt on there. All right, and then the last bit is uh, dill weed. All right, so for the, for the dill, again, there's really no measurement here. Um, you're just kind of coating. So just kind of a light coat. All right, and get a little shot of that, a little close. You know, it's just kind of a light coat. It doesn't have to be like super particular or anything like that. You know, just kind of make sure that it's evenly distributed. Um, and the dill flavor with, with the salmon is, is amazing. Um, it's actually, I think my wife um, or my mother-in-law turned me on to uh, using the dill on the salmon. And it's like the only thing I do with salmon now. So, um, big, big fan of how the, the flavor kind of comes together and combines and works out. So. This is like my go-to recipe when working with salmon. Next thing I'm going to do is take these uh, the salmon fillets and basically just kind of roll them up to create a little boat. Again, nothing really super fancy. And then it's, it's basically just going to sit like this. I'm going to go kick on the grill and get the grill warmed up. Um, I'm going to roll the rest of these up kind of similarly. And then I'm going to put them on the grill and just cook them just like this. And then I'll get some shots on the grill so you guys can kind of see what I'm looking for as I cook it. Um, because obviously you don't want to overcook the salmon. That could be problematic. So um, super, super simple, easy prep. Nothing too difficult here, I don't think. And uh, we'll move to the next stage of, uh, of making the meal. I always like to cook with beer. So if you're of age, 
and you enjoy beer, you should cook with beer because it just makes everything better. Um, and then also, you know, this recipe is really super easy and it's it's really delicious. So, um, you know, for any of my uh, any of my guy viewers that are out there, um, if you don't typically cook and you know you want to impress a loved one, girlfriend, potential girlfriend, whatever, whomever, um, this is a really cool, easy recipe that you can do. Um, it, it seems kind of fancy, um, you know, because it's salmon and it's not something that maybe you would think that somebody's going to cook on an everyday basis. Um, it seems kind of like more of a, tra a, a treat or a rarity. Um, but the recipe is so delicious and um, it's just a, a really nice, easy thing to do. And it, it's kind of a good point winner. So, you know, I know that here at the house, whenever I do this recipe, um, this is something that, uh, you know, my family enjoys real well. And then I, I usually pair it with, like, I have some rice going. So I, I am cooking with the Instant Pot tonight, but that's not what the recipe is about. Um, we're just going to pair it with some rice. I got some, uh, some jasmine rice that we're going to get going. And then I'll bring out a vegetable or, you know, something like that, uh, a broccoli, a steamed broccoli. And, uh, you know, the whole thing goes together super easy. Not a lot of maintenance or work on your part as the preparer. Um, and it just it makes for a really nice meal. And I'll get a shot of it when it's all done to give you guys uh, kind of what that looks like. But, um, you know, I also turned my buddy, my buddy Mike, uh, as my, my oldest, dearest friend. Um, he's down visiting with the family. And I kind of turned him on to the recipe. So just as a, uh, I guess, what do you call that? Uh, Testimonial, yeah, as a testimonial, I'll let Mike kind of give his opinion what he thinks of the flavor. Amazing, amazing. I've never really had salmon before. Um, every time I've tried it, I've never been able to cook it right. Every time I come down here, um, I always ask him to cook it because for some reason he just has the secret touch. So every time I'm down, I'm like, hey, at least once, you got to cook it for me. So enjoy. Cool. So anyway, so that's my buddy who never really ate salmon before. So even if you're not a fish um, enjoy or an enjoyer of fish, I guess, um, give it a whirl. It might be worth a try. All right. All right, guys. Hey, uh, we're outside uh, at the grill, and um, I got the grill going. Basically, I have the thing on high. Mine has three burners, and I got each one up. Um, the grill's at like 500 degrees right now. Now, in terms of temperature or whatnot, I actually don't even know what like the optimal temperature is. I usually just keep it fairly high, and I kind of monitor the um, the salmon quite a lot just to make sure that it's um, you know it, it's cooking appropriately. So, you know, if if it's too high, it'll start to burn around the edges. Um, so I'll get it nice and hot, and then I'll dial it down a little bit, maybe to medium or so on on the dial, and then just kind of monitor. Um, the other thing too is when the foil is on the way that it is right now, um, sometimes it won't cook as evenly. So I'll leave it in just as it is for a little while, but then after a bit I'll open it up so that that air can kind of circulate around the meat as well and cook it a little bit more evenly if, if necessary. And then you'll see me kind of continuing to check it to make sure that it's cooking appropriately and doesn't get too well done. So here we go. So for uh, you know putting these on here, I basically just have them wrapped up in this tin foil, and I just set the tin foil directly on. I only have one layer of the tin foil on. I don't. I don't do like multiple wraps or anything like that. It's just pretty straightforward. So, wrap it up. It's, it's got the oil, the dill, and the uh, or the, the butter rather, uh, the dill and the uh, salt. So I just put them on just just as it is, just like this, and I'll let that go. Um, now that it's nice and hot, I'll turn the temperature down just a little bit, then I'll close the lid. And I tend to check on the meat every couple of minutes just to make sure um, that it doesn't, it's not going, you know, too bad, right? Not, it's not getting overcooked because if it starts to overcook and starts to burn, it's going to burn quick. So um, the, this is kind of the hardest part of cooking this is just continue, is to continue to monitor uh, the meat to make sure that it's not getting overcooked. And so that it takes a little bit of babysitting, I guess. But good news is if you live in a decent climate and you enjoy beer, you can usually just kind of hang outside, listen to some music, and you know, tend to the uh, tend to the cooking. But so it, uh, it's pretty easy, nice way to get outside and avoid the madness of inside when other things are happening, and have kind of a quiet moment yourself. So that's kind of what I like to do. So try it out. And uh, sorry if the the lighting is kind of poor. Um, it's not bad if you're actually standing here, but it may not be all that great for recording. 
But anyway, so then we also got uh, my dog outside hanging out with us. Odin, come here, come here. sit. So this is this is Odin, and he's my purebred boxer. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good. He's got a case of the butt shakes. So whenever he gets excited, his whole butt just starts shaking like crazy, and he can barely stand. It's a little ridiculous, but I love him. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, so we have the grill going. The food's been on for about 10 minutes or so. Um, I dialed the temperature back, and it's holding steady at about 500 degrees or so, the thermometer says. Um, and so I'm going to do my first check. So come on over. So uh, this is kind of how I tend to do it. So I'll just kind of open them up and take a look. And you can see kind of a nice white color, a little bit of pink right there still. So obviously, you know, some, some ways to go. Now what I was talking about burning is down here on the edges. So you can see kind of this golden caramelized color. Um, that's not burning of the meat, rather that's more of the caramelization of the butter. But that's where you're looking for any kind of burning is down toward those edges. Because everything's going to burn, it's going to be down where it's thinnest. So this is pretty good, right? That's one of my bigger pieces. So bigger pieces looking pretty good. Now we got to check out one of my smaller pieces, make sure that we're not going too crazy on the on the smaller piece. So we'll open this one up. And again, same deal. Nice white color all the way around. No burning on the meat at all. You can still see some pink right here. So it still has a little bit to go yet. So we're gonna kind of blanket it back up. Maybe not all the way. Just leave it somewhat open. And then I'm gonna open up this like this uh, the second smaller piece as well. And this one's actually looking pretty good. So kind of a nice um, you know whitish pinkish color, you know, kind of all around it, you know, no burning so far. And that's pretty good. Uh, we'll let this go for a little bit longer. Leave this one open like this. And then um, you'll see kind of how I test it um, when it's a little bit more done, because I think it's not quite done just yet. Um, I'll take a fork and kind of start to separate the meat a little bit. And as long as it starts to separate and flake, and I don't see any like it, it really pink meat in there, um, that's a pretty good indication that it's done and not overly done, because you obviously don't want, you don't want salmon to be too dry. So, um, you know, just gotta kind of babysit it and just check it. Um, and the thing is, if this is maybe your first time ever trying this or you've never done it before, um, over babysitting isn't necessarily a bad thing either. So checking it every couple of minutes just to make sure that there's not, uh, you know, any burning, um, minding the temperature a bit to make sure that it doesn't get, get too, too hot. And then, you know, just checking it because uh, if you continue to monitor it, it doesn't have the chance to burn. So um, early on, before you kind of get used to cooking salmon, I would recommend maybe checking more often than not. Got a chocolate shake delivered. That's not bad. All right, here we go. Um, let's check on this meat here. We'll go to the thin slices first. Um, the nice thing with the tin foil is it doesn't retain heat very good. So even though it's in the grill with 500 degrees, you can touch it and it's not going to like fry your hand. So you can see a little bit of that that caramelization down toward the edge. That's pretty good. We'll put a little fork in there. Just kind of separate the meat a little bit. See how it starts to flake like that a little bit? All right, this is pretty good. All right, so the smaller piece is more or less done. And so here is the salmon now complete. Um, what I'll do is kind of go down the middle with it. Just kind of like that. There's kind of a natural, um, you know, medial line. And then you can guys kind of get in there and just kind of scrape. Right, and the, so the skin stays there on, on onto the um, onto the tin foil. So you can see the skin here, and we can just kind of scrape the salmon away from the skin, and it basically just comes right up. So anyway, as you can see, off the skin, onto the plate, pretty good stuff. So anyway, guys, that's the um, that's kind of the recipe for the salmon soup to nuts. Um, it's not that fancy, um, or it's not that hard, but it seems a little, a little fancy, I guess. Maybe not something most people would cook. So, um, and it's real nutritious. Um, good for you, tastes great, all that good stuff. So if uh, you haven't tried it, I would totally recommend this recipe as kind of your entry point for salmon. Even if you don't like salmon or you haven't been a salmon person, you may end up enjoying this recipe. So give it a whirl, leave a comment below, let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know, I appreciate some feedback. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think. 
Anyway, guys, I appreciate you checking the video. Um, remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave it in the chat box below, and uh, I'll be sure to respond. Remember, no matter what it is you think you can't do, train despite, either find an excuse or you find a way. We'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.